So many organizations have a ton of data available to them at the organization, but they struggle with finding ways to properly leverage it. Luckily, ClearPoint has many awesome features in place that make the process a little bit easier. So in this uh, quick webinar, we are going to discuss advanced use of the data loader, complex calculations and measures and projects, and then finally, we will look at dynamic evaluations for uh, measures, initiatives, and uh, objectives a little bit as well. So to begin, uh, we're going to start talking about the data loader. Um, I'm going to keep this brief so we can move on to some of the other things, but basically the data loader is something that you can install on your computer, uh, much like you can something else. Um, and this is something that you can use to map to metrics in your account and upload Excel, CSV, or SQL. So uh, you use your same username and password to log in. And here's where you will see a list of all the packages that you own. The two common use cases that we typically hear about is someone has a lot of historical data that they want to upload to ClearPoint when they first start using ClearPoint, when they're getting set up. Um, and this just helps with that transition from your previous reporting system. Uh, and then the other use case is when someone just gets into that regular reporting cadence and they're getting really efficient and save, finding different ways to save a lot of time. The data loader is one of those things where it can save you a ton of time so you can focus your attention on other things. For example, if, if you save yourself three hours of data entry a month, that's almost a week back of your time every year. So definitely a tool to consider if you are heavy into metrics in ClearPoint. So to begin, I'm just going to take a look at one example package here uh, to show everyone how this is set up. Um, so uh, to create a package, you just give it a name and you pick a file to use. Uh, and then you can go ahead and click Next. From here, you can select which, which scorecards you want to use. And then you get to the mapping definition screen. And this is where the most amount of work is going to go in. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up the file that we use so you can see how it's structured. In every file that you're going to upload using the data loader, you should have the periods listed in column A, followed by each series that you want to map to in the subsequent columns. And you can have as many columns going across here as you want. You can have as many sheets as you want. It's totally up to you. Uh, just for this example, I'm doing an actual and a target for one measure. So when we see it here on the mapping definition screen, from sheet one, actual, column name actual, I'm mapping it to the scorecard, and then the measure, followed by the series. If you've done the same thing in target, scorecard, measure, series. And um, you'll just repeat this for every series that you want to map using the data loader. So if I click next, now that I have it all mapped, this will take me to the preview data screen. And on the preview data screen, it'll show us what would happen if we were to upload. So it's a good place to review before you actually run the package. And then finally, I will get to the package schedule screen. Um, much like you can with briefing books, HTML reports, and reminders, you can add schedules to the data loader and to your packages. So this is a great option to save yourself some more time. Um, and like when the data loader, or when your data is due on the first of the month, for example, or the fifth of the month, uh, you can set up recurring schedules um, and save yourself a lot of time that way. But I'm not going to create a schedule today, so I'll just click Finish, and it will take me back to the data loader homepage, which is our data packages screen. Um, and the measure I'm going to upload to in ClearPoint is this citizen satisfaction survey, which we can see is totally blank. But if I go over to the data loader and I tell it to run by clicking this green arrow, it'll go. Let's go over to ClearPoint. It'll go ahead and refresh for us automatically. And now our data is here in ClearPoint. Um, all the calculations took hold, our evaluations evaluated, um, our charts charted, and uh, that all that leaves for us is just to leave our analysis.
So it can really save you a ton of ton of time, um, even in simple monthly data entry, if you imagine doing it to several measures every time. So as an admin, uh, there's a very important screen for you in system settings, admin options, and that is the data loader tile. So inside of here, an admin can see all of the packages that exist at in their account. So it, it'll be your packages as well as other users, and you can see who owns them, what PC they're on, etc. cetera. Um, if I wanted to edit a package, I can just click this pencil icon. I can change the name of it, the, where it lives, um, the machine ID, the package owner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, for example, if someone leaves your organization, like let's say Jenna was leaving ClearPoint, I could move this to Rachel. And now, the next time that Rachel logs into ClearPoint, she will see this package. Sorry, the next time she logs into the day loader, she will see this package there, and she will be the one able to upload it. So it's really convenient if someone leaves the organization. Um, question we often get is, can there be multiple people who own the same package? Uh, the data loader does only has one-to-one -one relationships between users and packages. However, uh, what we recommend doing is duplicating um, a package and now if I edit that duplicate I can change the owner to Neil so now Neil and I have perfect copies of the same package so when either of us log into the data loader um, we will see the same package. So if I was sick today when I needed to do this webinar, Neil could have gone in and uploaded the citizen satisfaction survey data for you. The one other thing I wanted to touch on in admin options for the data loader is this blue rocket ship button. Uh, what this does is it flags a package as ready to run. So sometime in the next five minutes, if your computer is on, that data loader is going to run automatically and upload that data. Um, so just one other way to save yourself a little bit more time is once you create your packages in the data loader, you don't have to use it anymore. You can simply um, rely on um, you can simply rely on the admin options rocket ship button and you just queue them up to upload and you don't even have to log into the data loader. So um, before I hand it over to Neil, uh, you probably notice I have this huge upload for training package. Um, inside of this package that maps to over 100 series for uh, the 50 or so participants at the summit training uh, where this was originally presented. So that whole upload was all done in just a matter of a few minutes. So save Neil a ton of time. Uh, before he gets into complex calculations on our measures and our projects. So now that everyone has data in their actual and target, why don't we walk through how we can create series calculations and evaluations for our measure. So I'm going to head over to the measure that Andy was referring to called retention rate that was used, um, he used the data loader to bulk upload data for. Now it's great to have data in your actual and target, but creating calculations and new series allows you to see trends in your data and gain key insights from the data that you have. So the first thing we're going to do is add a variance series. A variance series is a straightforward, um, easy to create calculation that gives you insight into how far off of a target you were for any given period. So to create a new series, I can scroll down, double click on my data table, and then you'll see an add series option. So if I click this button, you'll see the add series window. To name the series, you just type in the field and I'll call it variance. For data type, I'm going to select percentage because in this measure, retention rate is a percentage. So I wanna be consistent with my calculations. And once I have my name and data type, I can click into the calculation tab. I'll be prompted to save. 
and then you will be greeted by the calculation tab um, and you'll see below the calculation wizard. This is how we can piece together the variance calculation, which is actual minus target. So the dropdown we'll wanna focus on is this series dropdown, which is where we can piece together this calculation. Um, if we click the select measure series dropdown, we can select actual and then hit insert. And then above in the calculation text field, you'll see a three part token. The first token, it, the first part of the token is the measure ID. So this tells the calculation which measure in the account you should be looking at. The second part is actual or the name of the series that this, um, this calculation is going to reference. And then the last part is the aggregation. So this is telling the calculation that for this measure and this series, give me the current period. So that is the first part of the variance calculation. And then to create the second part, which is minus our target, um, we can first hit this minus sign. And then from the series dropdown, select target, and then hit insert once again. So now you'll see that I have my actual minus my target. And now this may look a little bit like gibberish, so if you wanna put it um, into terms of your data, you can use this test button. And your test button then shows you how your data or how your calculation would look based on the data you have in the table. So right now for June, I'm at 82 minus 97, which gives me a variance of negative 15. So now that we know our calculation is set up correctly, we can hit save. And then you'll be able to see a grayed out series for variance, which means that this is a calculated series. And now we can, another series we can create is calendar year to date. Um, so calendar year to date is good for instances where you may not have a defined target as historical performance is generally a good indicator of future performance. So to create a new series, we can also go and edit the measure and click into the series tab. And this is the manage series page for this measure where you can control all the series which are calculated or manually entered. And then you can also create different types of evaluation criteria. But to create a new series, we can hit the plus icon. And then again, we'll name it calendar year to date. I'll just abbreviate it for this example. For data type, I will select percentage and then I'll head back over into the calculation tab. So we want to create a calendar year to date average of our actual series because we wanna see how we're performing on a year to date basis. So for our series, we're going to select actual, but then for this final dropdown of aggregation, instead of current period, we're going to pull in our calendar year to date average. If we hit insert, we can see that the ID and series are the same, but instead of current period, you now see calendar year to date average because now the calculation is gonna perform a year to date instead of just a, um, pulling the current period. So now that this single token is set up, we can save and then save again. And then in our data table, you'll see the running percentage of our year to date performance. And now, now that we have our variance and year-to-date series set up, um, or in any other example, any new series you create for a measure can also be enabled in that measure's chart. So, so in this example, we have our actual um, charted against our target, but maybe we also want to include our calendar year-to-date series to see how our monthly performance performs against our year-to-date performance. So to edit and enable the series, we double-click on the chart Head over to the chart series tab and here you'll see you'll, we only have actual and target selected currently, but we can include calendar year to date. We'll assign it just a darker shade of blue and then we can hit save. So now in the chart, you can see that for the light blue section, we can see how we're performing on a monthly basis but then the darker blue also shows you how you're performing on a year-to-date basis. And now we're in June right now, but you can see that the calendar year-to-date series is repeating through the months of 2019. Um, and maybe in your chart, you only wanna show a calendar year-to-date value when there's actually data in your monthly series. 
So to fix this, we can create a different type of calculation, and that's called a case when, and we can do that for our calendar year to date. So, so if I head over to my calendar year to date series and double click on the header, we enable the editor, and then we can click back into the calculation tab. So I'm gonna remove what we currently have in this field and build a case when calculation, which is the equivalent of an if if then statement. So to begin, we type the words case when, and we can put our first line of criteria. So we only want the calendar year to date calculation to run when we have monthly data. So the first line of criteria is the case when our actual is null, which says when the actual period, actual for your current period is blank, then give me a blank value. And then we can write our other statements. So else, in all other scenarios, what do we want it to do? We want it to run the calendar year to date average. So I'll hit insert, and we'll wrap this calculation up by hitting end. So if we translate this to an if then statement, it's really if the actual period, actual for my current period is null, then give me a null value. In all other scenarios, give me the year to date value. So once I'm satisfied, I can hit save. And now in the chart, you can see that the year to date isn't running for periods where there's no monthly value. And then your data table is also going to show as blank for periods where there's no actual value. That's great. So now that we have our data configured, we can also create evaluations to um, avoid having to manually update the status each month or quarter. So to create an evaluation, we can edit and head back over to the series tab, and we'll edit our calendar year to date series. Under the calculation tab, you'll see an evaluation tab. So we can click into that, and we'll see all of the status indicators that exist in our account. What we want to do is create criteria for the four important statuses. So to begin, we can enable each of them. And then you'll see a few extra pop-ups populate on the right-hand side. And this is where you create the criteria. So I want to be on target when our year to date is greater than or equal to our target. I want to be caution if we are greater than or equal to our target. And then for a calculation, we can say times 0.8. So if we're within 80% of our target, we can be on caution. We'll be below plan for anything less than our target. <clears throat> and then no information will leave as any, which is just the, the criteria that exists at the bottom for all scenarios where there's blank data. So the way the evaluation criteria works is it'll read from top to bottom. So if the first line of criteria is not met, then it'll look at the next line, and it'll work its way down the list. So now that I have my criteria set, I can hit save. And then the last step is from the top evaluation option. Instead of manually evaluate, we'll want to choose the new year-to-date evaluation that we created. So once we hit save, You'll see that our measure is now evaluating based on the criteria that we set, um, and our chart is now populating. So this measure is ultimately configured with new series, a modified chart, and automatic evaluations. Now we can look at how we can turn an ordinary project into quantifiable support of our overall objectives. Project evaluations can be used to track and evaluate quantitative data that deals with project management for elements like initiatives, milestones, action items, or risks by leveraging master measures. So I'm gonna show you a basic example just to show you some of the simple functionality, but then Andy's gonna get into a little bit more complex of an example. So if I head over to my office redesign initiative, we can see a pretty normal detailed page of an initiative with percent complete, start and end date, and a Gantt chart. If we wanna turn this into a automatically evaluated initiative, what we have to do is link it to a master measure template. So if I edit the initiative, click to the edit initiative tab, you'll see for evaluation master measure, it's not currently evaluated, so we can select the basic project template. Once I do that, this initiative is successfully linked to this master measure template. 
However, you'll notice that right now we don't have a data table and we don't have a chart that I promised would be possible with these master measures. So what we can do is edit the layout. We can search for data to bring out the data table. And then we can also search for our project chart and bring that out. So now you'll see that our initiative has a chart and a data table. But one thing you may notice is that this chart or, and the chart and the data table have a lot of periods that may not really overlap with the scope of the start and end date of the project. So to fix this, we can assign an initiative a reporting frequency like we would with a measure to get the data table showing the right periods. So from the edit initiative tab, I can select the quarterly project um, reporting frequency, which is one that we created for this example. And then we'll see that our data table and chart are now showing the quarters of 2018 and 2019, which align nicely with the scope of our project. So now we can work on just entering data in this project. We can imagine that this would be a percent complete. So we'll keep the scope of this data entry for a percent complete, as if that's what you are updating. So if we think about the months of the quarters of 2018 and 19, and we evenly distribute this by eight months, we can consider our percent complete um, like this. So that would be my target. And then for my actual, I can also enter in data to see how I was performing. And I can also, like I said, manually evaluate and hit save. So obviously manually evaluating an initiative is what you guys are used to, but as I promised, we can also automatically evaluate these initiatives. So if I head over to admin options, master measures, and then I edit the basic project template, which is the one this is using, I'll have a series tab, which is controlling what I see in that data table. To create the evaluation criteria, we do the same thing as I walked you through earlier by editing the actual and headed over, heading over to the evaluation tab. I'll evaluate my four series so it creates the criteria that I want. I can hit save. Again, for evaluation option, instead of manual, we'll want to use the newly created um, criteria that we set. We can hit save one more time. And then if I close and head back over to Office Redesign, you'll see that in my data table, I now have an actual that is automatically evaluated based on the percent complete and how far off of the target it is. So now that we have these series, we can create charts to visualize our project for items like this with percent complete or with variance or budget. Um, generally on top of good charts, this gives you a great additional um, visual aid that you can have to take your projects to the next level. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Andy, who's gonna walk you through another complex example um, of how you can use project evaluation. Thanks, Neil. Um, now, for those of you who found this feature to be totally eye-opening and has you trying to imagine all the ways that you could bring data to life in your projects, this next example is for you. So to begin, I'm just going to go to this initiative in my account called Continued, Off Continued Education Program. And if I look in the data table, we can see all the different series that we have here. Neil looked at more of the evaluation stuff. I'm going to focus on doing some complex calculations and bringing this measure data, or excuse me, project data to life on your initiatives. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to admin options so I can show you how this is set up. If I go to my advanced project template. Okay. We can see that I have First, this actual percent complete series. This one is raw. Um, it's like an actual that you would enter values into, followed by a planned percent complete and a percent complete variance. These three should be kind of grouped together. The planned percent complete is a special calculation type called a reference series, where you can look at the calculated field of, or a custom field that uses a number format 
of something like your initiative. So in this case, we're using this elapsed percent complete field, which essentially gives us uh, how much complete should you be with this project, assuming a linear completion rate. So if it's a 10-year project after year one, I should be 10% done. Year two, 20%, etc. cetera. So that just kind of gives us an even completion planned slash target rate. For a percent complete variance, this is actually a calculation that we have between our actual, which is that raw, that actual value, and our planned or target. So Neil showed a variance earlier. This is doing that, but it's looking at our actual versus our target for a percent complete. The next six series are going to be grouped together as well. So if I look down at the end here first, we'll see that we have this total budget series. Um, this is also using reference series based on the custom field uh, that we have on the detail page. So I can go in and enter my project budget and it'll pull into this data table. This is important because I'm going to use this for most of the rest of these calculations uh, in this budget family. So the first series that we have is our raw actual series dollar spend. How much have we spent on the, of our budget have we used? Up next is an actual dollar spend year to date. This is just doing a calculation of our actual spend um, series, followed by our plan spend series, which is also a calculation. But this one is based on the length of the project. This is how much we should have spent for this period, assuming again, a linear rate of budget spend. This is sort of like the money equivalent to our planned percent complete. Up next, we have our spend variance. This is looking at our actual dollar spend and our planned dollar spend and telling us what the variance is. Um, and then finally, and this is probably the most important series to note here, is this percent budget variance. If I edit this series, we will see that it is going to take our dollar spend variance and divide our planned dollar spend to turn our dollar spend and now our variance into a percentage so that we can see what percent ahead or behind are we on our budget just like we can with our percent complete. How ahead or behind are we there? So if I click cancel, I'm gonna go back to that detail page so I can take a closer look with data in it. Um, here we can see that our variance is giving us the difference between these two. Our actual dollar spend is summing up in the year to date. Uh, here's our planned dollar spend, which is multiplying our million dollar budget by our planned percent complete. Uh, so it's figuring out that linear rate, followed by our dollar spend variance, which is the difference between our actual year-to-date and our planned spend, followed by this percent budget variance. And this is what is giving us our dollar spend in a percentage. So I'm going to go ahead and enter some data now. If I do 79%. and 80,000 spend. We can see that our percent complete variance um, looks like we're ahead by 5%, and then we're actually under budget by 10% as well, which is obviously awesome. So I'm gonna scroll up and look at these two series, um, these two families of series separately. So on the left, we have a percent complete. Uh, we can see how far, how complete should we be, and what is our actual, and then on the right, we have our budget spend. Um, what did we anticipate spending and what do we actually spend? And one thing you probably notice with these charts is it's kind of hard to appreciate the difference between your actual and your planned values. Um, so that's why I want to take a look at this chart here um, that's pulling in our percent. So um, starting with our blue, we can see how what percent can uh, sorry, what percent ahead or behind schedule were we? And then with the budget, what percent ahead or behind on our budget were we? Um, are we overspending? Here we can see that we're trending in the right direction here. And so what this really allows you to do is 
use data to evaluate these projects. And what I've shown you in this example here is how you can take something like a doll, like a budget spend and chart it in a way that tells a story similar to how a percent complete might. And I know this is just one way to measure a project. Um, there's lots of other things that, that you can do as well, like quality, um, did anyone get injured, uh, stakeholder satisfaction, output performance, or whatever that project is for, et cetera. So hopefully this kind of gets the wheels turning in your head for what could be possible uh, if I wanted to go ahead and um, build something out in my project tracking uh, that I do in ClearPoint to kind of bring it to life a little bit more. So currently this is being manually evaluated, which hopefully everyone is familiar with. But one of the cool things that you can do in evaluations, and this also applies to project evaluations, is if I have two series that are evaluated, so my percent complete variance and my percent budget variance, the ones that we saw charted together, I can choose to use something like a best series or a worst series evaluation. So it will give me whatever the worst score is between any evaluated series. So um, if we always want to look at our worst and uh, complete percent complete variance is awesome, like we're way ahead uh, schedule and where we thought we would be, but our budget variance is horrible and it's red, this will evaluate to red because that's the worst series. So this is just one way to, if you have a lot of different ways that you try to factor in the, val the score of a project or its performance, um, we have some different options in here uh, that could make that more flexible for you. Okay, so the final evaluation we are going to look at is doing it with objectives. I'm not gonna to get too deep into it, but can at least provide a little exposure here since we've been talking about the different evaluation options. Neil looked at um, measures and I did initiatives. So, um, well, Neil and I did initiatives. So we'll let's go into our objective called We Have the Best Team. And from here, we can see that uh, here's the measure that Neil helped with and the initiatives that we worked on. So uh, we can, can see that they're linked here. So by simply linking an element to your objective, uh, this makes it possible to evaluate that objective based on the performance of those linked elements. Uh, so if you wanted to set up an objective evaluation, all you need to do is come up and click the edit icon. And if you go to the links tab, there'll be a checkbox up here for enable automatic evaluation. If that is not checked, you simply just see your links. But if it is checked, you will see each of the uh, linked elements have a weight score that you can give it. So I could say, hey, I want these to be 50-50. And then it will multiply that weight by the status score, which in this case, yellow, is two, it'll give me one because it's 50, right? So 50% times two for yellow again is also one. So our total score is two. Okay, well, what does that mean? If we go to the evaluation criteria tab, this is where we can actually set our criteria for how this objective should evaluate. So you simply just check the boxes like much like you would in measures and you say, okay, it's on target when it is greater than or equal to three, let's say. Yellow, greater than or equal to two, et cetera. Um, so it's really flexible to do whatever you want. You might be wondering why is the score for yellow two? This is something you can control in admin options if those values don't really line up for the way that you think about your different statuses. Maybe green is five and yellow is three and red is one or something like that. Uh, you can totally change all of that and customize it for your account if you want. But now if we go in and 
change our the evaluation for our initiative you can see their score is now 2.5 all right, um, so that's all that I have, but before we end it here, I'm going to hand it over to Neil to uh, show off one last treat that we have in ClearPoint for you. So one additional calculation that you may not have seen with our standard calculation wizard is a calculation called aggregate status. So if I head over to a measure that we have called Project Counter, you can kind of see some of its capabilities. What it is doing is counting all of the statuses of the different projects that exist in our account. So with all of the attendees for training, you can see that we have a total of 94 projects or different initiatives in this account with the different statuses and how they are broken down. The way it works um, is if you can see if I click on the above target series, it's going to look at all of the scorecards in our account and it's gonna look at a specific element which we've dictated as initiative and then it's going to look for a specific status indicator so this series specifically is looking at all of them pulling in all of the on target projects we have and giving us a number that same setup is used for caution below target and no information and then we have a total that looks at all of our projects together and then we can leverage html with data fields to pull in tokens that look directly at the data table. So anytime that you enter in percent complete for a project, and that in turn automatically evaluates your project, that also in turn automatically runs to this counter that will then update the HTML with data fields. So you have that nice pretty dashboard that summarizes all of your information in one place. So again, this is one cool way that you can automate that process all the way from manually entering in data at an initiative, um, that can roll up all the way to automatically evaluating your overall projects, and then you can also have that influence and kind of create this pretty dashboard that shows you how all of your projects are doing at once. So as you can see, there are numerous ways to leverage data that already exists in your account. Andy showed you how you can connect the data loader, which can be a huge time saver when uploading data into ClearPoint, whether that's on a monthly or quarterly basis. We can leverage normal data in our measures and create calculations and evaluations to see how we are objectively performing. And then we can even use projects to track quantitative data and have that tie into our overall evaluation of our objectives. So thanks again for your time today, and we hope you can take some of this information and translate it to your accounts. Happy reporting.